hello my brothers and sisters welcome to my channel welcome back to my channel for you who've been tuning in from the beginning and for you who are new on my channel if it's your first time to listen from me you are so much welcome and do not hesitate to subscribe to my channel um, and I am Linda Peace a servant of the Lord that's what you can call me uh, my emphasis here on YouTube is um, to see that we all meet the perfect will of God, of what God expects of us, even when nobody is perfect. But we have to strive to see that we meet at least of a hundred of hundred percent of His, that we can meet maybe eighty percent of it, because the and then the twenty percent of it is coming on that day will be made complete. On the day when our Lord Jesus Christ will appear that's why the Bible says for there is nobody that is perfect but except only Jesus Christ you know and our perfection is yet to come on the day the Son of God shall appear that's why we keep on repenting repenting cleaning our souls cleansing our souls cleansing our souls until the day we are crowned with the, with the crowns of righteousness, the crowns of holiness, you know. Now may the peace of the Lord be upon you all. And I am glad to be here again and have a word with you. Um, as you all know, we are so much close to our day, um, to our week of fasting. Remember, if you have been following me from the beginning, you know that we've been fast. We always fast at the end of each and every um every last week in a month you know we get before our lord and this instruct this this first thing that we do sorry you all know uh you who have been following me brothers and sisters you know that uh our lord gave us this instruction and uh as we have been faithful in this fasting uh those that have been participating in this fasting each and every week you have taken each and every um last week in a month you have testified you have seen changes in your lives in your spiritual lives in your families many of you have been uh, 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 healed uh it's just that you do not see um uh, these people testifying here maybe it would not there will not be an opportunity for them to testify on this on the platform but when you go through the comments there you will see uh, uh, some some of our brothers and sisters do testify they're always faithful coming back and testifying to us what our father is doing for them in the secret no I I, I do not um, I do not um, I do not release healing but I am here to lead as the Spirit of the Lord uh, leads me you know so if you hear you expecting of perfection from me you're not gonna get it but if you hear to uh, expecting the the, the, the um, perfection in you in Christ then you will get it okay now do not hesitate to subscribe to my channel and do not hesitate to also tell your brothers and sisters tell many people out there you know to come and listen to to me or any servant of the Lord that you see the Lord is speaking through that person now you know you know um, it's something I want to, to share with you something I want to share with you um, that the Lord has been sharing with me um, in the in the past in the past week um there is a lady that shared with me her testimony she 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 narrated to me her whole story of how she traveled from home and she um came over here um and i, I picked something in her conversation i picked something um out of that and um, that point kept on uh, it, it, it stuck in my mind and uh, as of that the Spirit of the Lord uh, started to speak to me uh, concerning that matter concerning that whole image of what she was talking about that whole story that she was talking about you know lately this lady she 
uh, say to me she had traveled uh, before she she had to um, to travel back here uh, at her exit back home she was um, she was banned from traveling back again uh, to South Africa <coughs> and then uh, she had to go and get a new passport so this passport that um, she was using they had to take hold of it uh, but it was an old passport and then when she got a new passport of course the image of that of, of the of, of the old one was quite very different from this uh, new one now uh, she told me this story I'll try to cut it uh, short she had her child of three months three months old and her husband was here uh, so they were leaving here they, they leave they were leaving here and um, so she had to travel to come from that side to come over here and leave as a family so her main target was to live as a family you know her and her husband and their firstborn their first child okay the husband has never seen the child you know he has never seen the child now the wife is like i want to go so we can live as a family united now on her way um after cross crossing five borders and this was her final border they had to give her difficulties on the border and they got hold of her arrested her with her three months old baby and her luggages um, and then they had to to give her two options they had to, to, to tell her um, no actually not two but they asked her to get back from where she's coming from she had already crossed five countries <laughs> you know she had already crossed five countries and she has to go back um, that's why she had to take the phone and phone um, and phone who her husband who was already here so the husband had already given her the phone number that if you try to phone on this one and it's not going through phone on the other one okay that was um, that 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 was um, that was um, can I say a kind of something she would rely on because she was given two options uh, this other number and the other one you know if you try this one it doesn't go through uh, there's a possibility that the other one will go will go through you know because mostly when people are traveling it's a very important thing that uh, to where you're going um, the network is always on you know or else a person gets stuck okay now she um as she was behind the bars with her baby um and her luggages and now she started weeping crying uh, when she tried to phone her husband the number didn't the numbers didn't go through um she was disappointed she had nobody nobody to stand by her side she was alone you know like a lauren and lauren now she felt like the world has ended <laughs> the world has ended you know and then she had to phone um, a friend of the husband and said to him, I tell, tell my husband that me, I've, I've been arrested and they can't let me go through, come through. So I, I'm going to do what? I'm going to go back home rather. Um, okay. So now she, um, as she was trying to make a plan of how she's going back home, you know, she had already crossed five countries and now she's planning to go back again, you know. <laughs> um, just look what happens, you know. Uh, these people had to, re to release her. They told, they told her, go sit there and we ha we're going to have, uh, we're going to, to have our lunch. So go sort out everything. If you, 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 um, you're ready, we can give you your luggage and you can leave. So they took hold of her passport then again. They, 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 got, they took hold of her passport. She couldn't do anything. She couldn't go anywhere, you know. Uh -huh. And she's got three months old baby. Three months. Okay, so she was sitting there weeping, crying. Now she doesn't know what to do. <laughs> she doesn't know what to do at all. You know, she's not that, that, that believer, that strong believer. That, um, 
or a woman that fears God or a person that has a relationship with God she's not that person but now see how a person just comes and sits next to her a, a gentleman came and sat next to her and said why are you crying and she said um, they have refused to let me in they banned me and what and everything she narrated her story to him um, and then he said he said to her you have already crossed five countries and this is your final this is your final border are you are you are you do you want to go back or you want to go forward do you want to go back or you want to go forward he says there is nothing i can do you know my husband's phone is off where am i going to go how am i going to find him or what where am i going to start from you know they they took hold of my passport how how am i going to survive how am i going to to travel you know my luggage is inside there how am i going to take it out you see that um it's like i'm asking you one more question you've already crossed five countries do you want to go back do you want to go back and with all your strength and all the money that you had uh, uh, um, you had spent to try to, to cross all those borders or you want to go forward to your destiny to see your family to leave with your husband as a family ask them <laughs> just one thing decide what do you want do you want to go back or you want to go forward do you want to go back you've already crossed five countries do you want to give up now yes you can see that your bags are inside there your passport is inside there there is no way you can get out there is no way you can grow you know nobody here all the phone the, the phone the phone numbers the, the cell phones are, are not going through and it's only you alone yes I know that but tell me one more thing do you want to go back or you want to go forward she said I, I have I have nobody to help me I have nobody to help me what do you want me to do and then the gentleman said trust me you are going to see your husband you will see your husband in a few minutes you'll be already there and just in a few minutes the lady found herself in the country she found herself in the country in just a few minutes in just a few minutes with her luggage now she leaves with her husband in her conversation i had to see it was such a, a very uh, big time of distress for her it wasn't easy for her to deal with it you know um, and i had to see that There are some things that we as people can handle, but there are things that we cannot handle. There are things that we can do and there are things we cannot do. That's one, that, that's one thing that the Lord told me when I was in that situation. When I was in a situation, for you who have been following me, you know the situation I have gone through, that I have said to you, I have testified to you, what the Lord said to me. With me as well, in that situation, uh, the police tried to help me, but they couldn't. Many people tried, but they couldn't. It's like everywhere was blocked. I myself tried to help myself. But I couldn't. Friends tried, but they couldn't. And then this small voice I heard, he said to me, There are things, there are things that only I can do. <laughs> Jesus. There are things that only I can do. That night, it was cold, that night, 
There was no house, there was no shelter, there was no food. There was no family, there was nothing. One thing I did, I asked, Father, will you give me a place to stay? Will you give me somewhere I can shelter myself in the night? Or will you let me be outside? And in that place, what he gave, something I was expecting, some, I was expecting something so bigger, you know, but he gave me something very small. And in that very small thing, he taught me a lot of things, a lot of things. God wants to find you in a very small position so that he can be able to teach you in that humbleness. When you are in a small position, you are humble. In that small position, in distress, you are humble. In that small position, in that distress, in that problem, in that sickness is where God is active. Is where God is active. In that very time is where God said to me, there are things that only I can do. He said that to me, there are things that only I can do. You can see you've tried your family. You, the police has tried. You see uh, your friends have tried. Even you yourself, you've tried. But there are things that only I myself can do. Only I. That's why the Lord said to me. There are things that only I can do. And surely as the Lord had planned. I'd stay there. Until he moved himself. Until he moved me. That got my heart relaxed. Stop doing things. To move yourself out of the situation stop doing things to move yourself out of the situation but wait on the Lord because there are things that only God can do stop relying on people you might be having a business you might be having a business and you say no whatever is happening around the world Maybe one time when I shall lack food in the house, maybe when I need anything, the, my business will always be there to provide for me, will always generate money for me, will always do this for me. No, you have a dad, you have a mom, you say, no, if in case maybe I get stranded, if in case maybe a problem happens on me, I got my family to back me up, I got my mom, I got my dad, I got my brothers, I got my sisters, you have partners. You say, no, I rely on this person. You say, no, you say, no. If anything could happen, this person has promised will always stand there for me. So I don't need to worry at all. He loves me so much. She loves me so much. My mom loves me so much. My dad loves me so much. My brother, my sister, they do care for me so much. They do care for you day and night. They care for you. They care for you. But there is something they cannot handle, and only God can handle. There is something they can, that is what the Lord is saying to us now. Do not put your trust in people, in anybody. In anybody, do not. And you know, God speaks to us in different kinds of ways, to everybody. Believers, non-believers, because we all coming from God. We all being created, we all created by God. You see, even, even demons believe in God. Even demons fear God. They were all created by God. Why do they torment those people? Why do they have that chance to torment the people? But yet they fear God. They know the commands of God. When God speaks, they tremble. But why do they have the chance to torment people? Why do they have the chance to torment people? I don't know if somebody's understanding me. God is a God of everybody. He's a God of everyone. A thief will call out to the name of God. Please save me. When that person is being saved from that sin that leads to death, you've read in the Bible where Paul said that not all sins lead to death, but there are sins that lead to death. There are certain sins that lead to death. 
the scenes whereby you are killed sport to sport. These physical scenes. There's some somebody I hope someone is understanding what I'm saying. God will rescue a person from a scene that leads to death with one purpose with a purpose you see with a purpose maybe he will repent maybe she will repent maybe she will see that I have saved him they say God please forgive me God please save me they say that they cry that they say that they cry that God please save me God please please they call everybody calls the name God everyone believers non-believers those that believe in Jesus those that do not believe in Jesus even the Buddhists all of them they will call the name God they will you see that you see they'll scream the name God even the name demons scream the name God look at the compassion look look at the compassion of God look at the mind of God look at it look look what God expects from us look they scream the name God God rescues them from that sea from the death he rescues them from the death maybe from an accident an accident this person is a non-believer he's a non-believer you see he doesn't believe in the son of God he does he that believes in the son of God is got life but he does not that does not believe in the son of God does not have life that's what the Bible says for God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son that whomsoever whomsoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life in these people that are perishing God is still there for as long as he is still on the throne for as long as Jesus is still on the throne there is still mercy for everybody you see listen look there is still mercy for everybody God does not only deal with his believers not only them even these non-believers in a way that's where you've read in the Bible where he has said that for there is none that comes to me except the Father leading them to me. You see? There is none that comes to me except the Father leading them. That's why you see the Bible emphasizes to pray for one another. Pray for the world. You see? Pray for the world. When you pray for the world, you pray you break these spirits that operate. That if this world is controlled there is a spirit of impurity on this world. When you read in the Bible, you'll find it. There is a spirit of impurity that makes people unclean day and night. Day and night. Day and night. Now look, when we pray for people, you see, when we pray for people, this is how God operates and, you know, a prayer of a righteous person is so powerful when we pray for people this is how God rescues people from their sins you know and he deals in this way that maybe they will see it is God really that saved me from that I was supposed to be dead right now that car would have knocked me down and I would be dead right now and the only thing they do is to go and drink they say I have survived death they go and slaughter cows, sheep, gods, and they make sacrifices. They say, my God has, they say they are gods. They call their gods, have protected them, have rescued. But they do not know that God has a plan on their lives. You see, God has a plan on the life of everybody. He deals with everybody in different kinds of ways. Even the rich. Even the rich. But there is one thing that God is expecting from everyone. This is what most of the people say. God deals with everyone in different kinds of ways, which is very much true. Very true. Even when you do not have his name in your mouth, 
He still sees, he watches your distress, your suffering. He created you. He has no pleasure in people de dying day and night. No, he's the one who created people. He wants people to come to him, to worship him. In his, you know, in his kingdom, people to worship him. He has no pleasure in people dying. That's why you see a person will testify to you, me. It is my God that protects me. It's my God that protects me. One time I was, I was walking from the club and there were these people and they attacked me. And it's only God that protected me. Do you think God has got pleasure in you going to clubs? Not at all. But he rescued you from that terror. He rescued you from that. So that you may see his kindness towards you. His love towards you. So that you may see him and acknowledge him. And say, oh, thank you so much. And humble yourself before him. And walk with him. This is what he expects from people. You see? This is what he expects from people. This is what he expects from us. You see? This is what he wants from us. From everybody. From everyone. This is the man who created us. He has no pleasures in people dying. He has no pleasures in that. But he gives a chance to everyone living that we may get to know him. And when he rescues us from those problems and then we acknowledge him as our God, this is how he then he leads us to his son, to the light. He brings us into the light. You see, that's why you see that for there is none that comes to me except the father leading them to me. First, he shows himself to us by his mercy. Then we, we respond, you see, when we respond. Then he leads us into the light. That's why the, that's why the Bible says that today when the spirit of God shall call, do not harden your hearts. You see? Now, this whole thing, this whole thing, the other time I was talking to myself, in the spirit, uh, in my house, I was talking to myself with the spirit of the Lord around me. I was talking a lot of things. It's like the Lord was just uh, talking the whole story that this that I'm uh, uh, teaching here. He was just narrating everything to me of how he has created man and what he expects from us, you know, how the world has misunderstood him, you see? He deals with us in different kinds of ways, but there is one thing about him, one thing that does not change. He's holy and he expects us to be just like him. He deals with us in different kinds of ways. We relate with God in different ways, but it's one thing about him. He never changes. And his expectation from us, it never changes. He expects us to be those children that are just like him, born like him, who walk and talk by the spirit, his own spirit. You see that? His own DNA. His own DNA in us. Hating evil. You can't be going still to the clubs and you say, no, I am, I, I am a child of God. Then you still need the mercy of God on you. You are still very far. Still very far. Now, when I looked at the story of this lady, I saw that, first of all, she's not a spiritual woman. She does not, she's not that spiritual. I look at how many times I have been telling her of the way she dresses and how she adorns herself, how she has to change her life and give herself to Jesus Christ. Um, when I looked at all these things, I molded everything together and I got to see uh, that God deals with everyone in different kinds of ways. But it's one thing that he expects from us. 
Now God was looking at one was looking at his own will in the life of this lady. What is his will? His will is to see is was to see that she gets to live as one with her husband. They have a child. Her husband is God does not want the two to be apart like this. But they have to be together. He will always defend himself. God will always defend himself in each and everyone's life. He will always defend his will in each and everyone's life. Sit back and look in your life and see ways, places, times where you were wicked wildly. But God truly fulfilled his purpose. You found that you, you had to be in a place or you had to do something or you, you, you got something that you needed in the moment. You know, you, you had been taken out of a situation that you didn't expect to get out by your own self or by anybody helping you. That's the will of God. He will always fulfill his will. He will always play his role. And then it is upon us to decide. He will always do that. Non-believer, believer, he will always do it. He will always do it. And on the day of judgment, we will be standing there. These things will be standing against us. Didn't I fulfill my will in your life? Didn't I protect you? Didn't I give you life? I gave you life. Didn't I heal you? Didn't I give you another chance? When you came out of the club and people were planning to harm you outside, didn't I protect you? I protected you because I wanted you to see this so that you can turn away from that wickedness. And you know that the wages of sin is death. You know that it is death, but the gift of God is life. When you see something like that, you have to open your hands widely like this and say, thank you, God, come. Don't push God away. God will say that when you needed to live with your family, with your husband, with your wife, didn't I fulfill this? Didn't I fulfill this? Because I know that a man and woman, man when man shall leave his family and come and unite with his woman, they will become one. And the two should not be teared apart. It is my will that you and your wife, you and your husband, you stay together. It's my will that you do not commit adultery. Didn't I give you a woman? Didn't I give you a man to marry? Didn't I bless you with marriage? Why did you then go and commit adultery with another woman? Why did you then go commit adultery with another man? These are the things that are going to be standing there, testifying against us. God will always fulfill his will, his purpose in our lives, his will. He will always play that part. He will always do it. This lady didn't expect it. Maybe she might think that it is a kind of normal, uh, usual people who come and help. But if she can sit and, and look into it, she can, she can see the hand of God in her life in a way that her husband was not able to help her but God was sitting above was watching of how many hours she was weeping she was crying with a three months innocent child innocent innocent what do you think God is what do you think God is what do you take God for you see we all come from God you see we creations of God 
What do you take God for? He sees everything. You see, he does not take losses. Now, let's look into our lives and see and see how how much God has spoken and let's not harden our hearts but let's humble our hearts uh, our souls before God and get to him in humbleness you know and thank him of all these things that he he does in our lives that's the thing that the Lord has been um, the Lord taught me in the past week concerning that whole topic of how the will of God was to see that this woman lives with her husband they live as a family it is the will of God now it might be also in your life it might be in your life as well you might be in a situation you might be in a situation whatever the situation might be when God shall take you out of that situation he will surely do it he will do it he will do it he's not too blind he's not too deaf how much more we who believe and trust in his son when we shall ask it's just about time it is just about time God always does whatever we ask as long as it's aligning with his will and one thing that he also was uh, he was also teaching me and reminding me of prayers I used to make I used to make a lot of prayers by then when he had just restored me I was then getting to know um, much about him as he was teaching me um, prayers I used to make prayers that um, could only satisfy me as a person prayers that um, could fulfill my high desires and there was no place of God in those in those prayers you know and when I see it I can see it and love so when the Spirit of the Lord was reminding me in the past week of all these things I was sitting and I was laughing to myself and I say <laughs> I say truly God you are a father truly God you are a father he's got a plan for everybody he's got a perfect plan for everybody you know you can say okay i want this father i want this you know uh, maybe it might be crooked and then you ask him to make it upright because you know his word says that for i am the one that makes what's crooked upright okay that's what the word says now you can pray about something you can pray about somebody you can pray about you know you pray for that person and be like no god i want that person to be mine you know but the person is not a believer it's a non-believer I mean, there is no problem with marrying a person that's a non-believer there is no problem for as long as the two of you are in agreement there should be no problem with that that's what the bible says okay now you have partners that are non-believers and they are willing to live with you and accept your faith do not push them away but if they decide to leave let them leave let them go you are not bound to them now you can pray uh, you can pray and say God I want you to change that person oh but on the other side if you are also planning to have a partner ask God first ask God first okay there is that t that moment where you are caught into a person that is non-believer do not run away as long as you're in harmony and is accepting your faith do not run away and is willing to live with you do not run away do not divorce do not ask to leave 
to be unplagued. Don't ask for that. And of you who are just planning to get married and you're looking for partners, look in the family of God. Look within the family so that you may not have any troubles in the, in the marriages, in the marriages. Because when you marry these unbelievers, they want to go party, they want to go drink. You don't know who they sleep not with. You don't know if they're faithful or they're unfaithful. You do not know because they don't have the fear of God in them. So you don't want to sin. You don't want to live in sin just with, because you are now one flesh. What a person does is what you do. You see, you are one person. You become one flesh. So be careful on that. Be very careful on that. But you who are together with the one that's an unbeliever, do not, do not even have doubts in your heart or in your mind. Don't even think about it. Don't even think about it. Rely on the word of God. Rely on the words of God. That person is sanctified through you. Who knows? Maybe they will be saved through you. Who knows? But rather pray for them that they may be one as we are in Christ. Okay, so I was saying that you pray for somebody and you say, God, this person is an, uh, 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 so like maybe a Muslim or whatever, whatever it may be. He said, I want you to change this person. <laughs> I want you to change this person, Father, and give this person to me because I'm attracted to this person. And she or he is also attracted to me. <laughs> God is looking from above, you know. He's sitting up on his way and looking at you making this kind of prayer. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. Uh, and he said, like, what is this kind of prayer that my child is making? Why is she or he not telling me to give her a right person? Why is she asking me <laughs> to do something? Why is she telling me what to do? Can she not see the, the kind of the background that this person is coming from? Can she not see what would happen if they live together? With this person now me i will testify to you i've made such a kind of prayer to god a person that i was attracted to and i say uh, that was uh back some time ago i think a year ago i made a prayer to god father i would want if you're giving me a person to be part of my life i want you to give me that person that gentleman and but he's not a believer he's not a believer father look at him uh, i would want you to change that person and make him a believer father i will wait i will wait on you i'll wait on you i'm not gonna tell i'm not gonna tell him concerning this matter i kept on praying to god and fasting about uh, fasting about it but i didn't tell that person about it I just prayed to God. I kept on praying to God. I kept on praying. I said, now, okay, it's been long. Father, show me something. What would happen if I and that gentleman became one? What would happen? Oh, wow. And God surely had to show me what would happen. And it wasn't a good thing. So I had to thank God for that. And from then, he had to... He had to teach me that in everything that I do, I have to always ask God, you know. You have to always ask God everything that you do, every step you take, whoever you meet, who are you calling a friend, who are you, what, what, where are you going to work, you know, who are you going to work for. Your bosses, ask God, show me something concerning my bosses, show me something concerning uh, my colleagues, how are their hearts, how are, so that you may know who are you living with. Who are you working for? So you may know how you should handle them. You see that? You see? How you should handle them. You see? You see that? Yeah. You, he will tell you everything. He will show you everything. He will show you everything. You see? And after him showing me that, and I said, okay, Father, now you see there is a little bit of attachment between me and him. Now I want you to separate me from him. 
cause something to happen that would separate us. I don't want to be with him because you showed me this. If truly you said this would happen, I want you to distance me from him. And God did it. He did it. He did it. You see, everything you do, ask God. Ask God. You know, ask God. Consult from God. Do not rush to make do not do not rush to make decisions. Ask God. You see? Ask God. He's a father. You know? And that time he had that time he had to tell me, I am the one that gives you into marriage. Because you're my daughter. Just the same way you see a father at home who gives birth to you or mother, they give you into marriage, you know. These are just earthly, 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 earthly fathers and mothers. What about your one who, who uh, created you, who owns your spiritual life, your eternity, and everything about you, who gives you health, who heals you, who dresses you, who gives you food. You know, every, he watches over you, protects you, protects you, protects you. God protects his own. You see? You see that? What do you think? You're going to rush and make decisions. Now I'm going to... Ma you don't talk to God about... Father, now see, I am planning now to get married. This is my partner. This is my fiancé. You see? And we are planning to live together. But Father, I do not know how it will be if we live together. Now tell me something, Father. Shall we be happy? You see? Shall we be happy if we live together? If we be a husband and wife? How will it be? Tell me something. You see, the date, tell him the date you had planned to do that before. Tell, get into first and you fast about it. Father, now see, this is the date I have planned that we're getting married. You see, or maybe you're planning for something. Father, this is a represent everything. Talk like a father talk. You see, this is the date, Father, we're planning for this. I'm planning for that. But I don't know if I will be successful or not successful. When you read in the, in the, books, of, in the, in the books of Kings, you will see how Saul prayed to God. David, Solomon, you see? You see? All the kings, how they prayed to God. You see? How they consulted from God. Shall I go? Will I be successful? Will you lead all of them into my hands? You see? You see that? Before they went out to attack their enemies, they said, Father God, God, should I go and attack and pursue those Philistines? You see, should I go and pursue, Father? The, 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 uh, the, the Moabs, the Amorites. He said, Father, well, uh, God, and they said, God, God, should I go? Will you, will you give them into my hands? He said, God. He said, Go, but go like this. He gives, he gives direction. Go, he can see. <laughs> How much more we who believe in Jesus Christ, we who have seen, who have known the Son of God, you see that? Do you see that? You see, he sees every he said, Go, but go like this. Then they're that side, their stations with their arrows, with their pangas, with their what? They're waiting for you. They want to do this. Now you go on your knees. Your weapon is prayer. Prayer. <laughs> you see that? Prayer is your weapon, whatever the situation is. Prayer should be your weapon. Prayer. You have misunderstandings with your colleagues, with your bosses. Pray about it. Don't approach anybody. Maybe you treat, you tr you're being treated injustly. Injusticely. Do not bother. Don't bother anybody. It's not, it's not their business. It's not their business. That persecution is meant for you. It is meant, it's there for you. For us, from beginning, it was spoken of that it will come for those that will say, no, my father, stay on the commands of my father. You see that? You see, now it is not their problem when you are going through that situation. Go talk to your father in heaven. That's what matters most. Okay. 
and you have to always remember to thank him when he delivers you from that problem from that matter you see that okay um peace be upon you all um and i'll see you again in our next video if god wills we will have another channel that will be basing on only prayer praying praying i thank you all who are partnering with me who are helping me in in my ministry surely there are many things i'm purchasing um to get the word of god somewhere so and also i thank you who are also in prayer you should pray you should pray that i preach the word of god boldly you should pray that in this humbleness in this gentleness that i can draw at least five or ten to the kingdom of god that they may also come and be like us and walk like that now prepare you know our fasting this is we're going to we're going to go like this time around we're going to go from tuesday this this uh, next week tuesday next week tuesday will be a what let me check the date next week tuesday will be um the 23rd 23rd so we will go from it from the 23rd to the 30th from 23rd to the 30th that from tuesday to tuesday our fasting will go like that from 23rd to 30th from tuesday to tuesday this is how we're going to go okay uh, always just be tuned in waiting for my message whatever the lord will give to me i will surely come and share with you and pray for me also as well pray for me because there is a lot that i face a lot that i go through it's not easy to serve the lord it's not easy to be a servant of god there are many trials many of them many fights many battles and prayer also for them out there pray for them pray for also uh, the servant, the women and the men of God that are serving the Lord in faithfulness and humbleness and boldness. You see, that are not preaching to excite the ears of people, uh, prosperity, success and what they are not rebuking people of sin. Pray for these people. Pray for those also of them. Those gifts were given to them, but they misused them. It's one thing also that the Lord has, has um, that shared to me, taught me in the past week. It said to me that when he, 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 all these gifts that you see people have on the world, they all came from him. But because of the greediness they have, because of the greediness they have, you know, people have went forward into seeking for other powers, other powers stopping up onto what they were given from God. But now God is not going to withdraw what he had already given to you. He's not going to withdraw it, you see. He's not going to withdraw it. It's going to stay there. That's why you see people do this, people do that, people do that and do this and do that. You get what I'm saying? Uh, but it's just one thing that God expects from us. He deals with everybody in different kinds of ways. But one thing that he expects from us, holiness. Just holiness. Just righteousness. Just obedience. And out of a thousand words I can say, it's one word that God expects holiness out of a trillion words I can say or people can say it's one word out of the million the millions of miracles people perform on this world prophets and apostles and whatever it called or what one one word holiness holiness and the foolish person is he that will walk blinded with the miracles blinded with the wealth blinded with success of the world on that day you will be revealed as a foolish one by the wise ones with the ones who walk in the brokenness accept to be broken in god accept to take that pain then you are the clever one you will surely be revealed as a clever one okay peace be upon you all and i see you again bye